Hello friends, welcome to the online lecture series of digital communication. Myself, Assistant Professor Mr. B. R. Vadekar from Department of Electronics and Telecommunication from Matoshi College of Engineering and Research Center, NASIC, affiliated to Savitri Pai Phule Pune University. Today we are going to start last module that is spread spectrum modulation. So let's start with our today's video. Here it is a content of module number six. In this module, we are going to study about zero noise sequence. What is spread spectrum? Frequency hop spread spectrum. The reference book that we are going to use, it is a Bernard Sklar and Dr. Sanjay Sharma's communication system. What are the objectives of this module? In this module, students are expected to be able to understand what is spread spectrum and its need. What is zero noise sequences? direct sequence spe spread spectrum and what is frequency hop spread spectrum. After completion of the unit, students would be able to understand model of spread spectrum, understand generation of zero noise, understand use of direct sequence spread spectrum and understand frequency hop spread spectrum. In today's module, we are going to see zero noise sequences and spread spectrum. So let's start. Students, till now we have discussed a number of digital communication systems and the focus of our attention while discussing those systems was on two important factors, namely that how to utilize the channel bandwidth efficiently and second one, how to minimize the amount of transmitted power. However, the efficient utilization of bandwidth and minimizing the transmitted power are not only the problems you know faced by a communication system. Some other problems also encountered by it which are as follows. In the areas such as military communication, the information has to be secure. That means an unauthorized user is not expected to access the information. Also, he should not be allowed to interfere the communication by any means. Second, you know, sometimes a hostile transmitter, say any terrorist, can jam the desired or legitimate the transmission. To avoid this, the channel should be immune to any external interference. Even in the non-military communication, an unintentional interference is caused by a user who is transmitting its information through a channel which is already being used. So what is the remedy? These all problems can be successfully solved by using a technique called spread spectrum modulation. So how this spread spectrum signal it is different from the normal signal? It is different in the following aspects. This signal, it occupies a larger bandwidth than that of a normal signal. Hence, name it is called spread spectrum. The spread spectrum signal invariably uses some kind of coding. The spread spectrum spreading at the transmitter and the despreading at the receiver is obtained with the help of this code word. The code word associated with spread spectrum signal is independent of the information carried by the signal. Spread signals, you know, it uses a fast codes that run many times the information bandwidth or data. You can see on the figure that this is the data, actual signal, and this is the spread signal. 
that is a power spectrum of this data signal and the spread signal so these special spreading codes are called pseudo random or pseudo noise codes they are called pseudo because they are not real gaussian noise also the most important point is that the spread spectrum signal is pseudo random in nature this makes it appear like random noise therefore the normal receiver can't demodulate the spread spectrum signal only a special design receiver can demodulate it to recover the information so due to this characteristic the spread spectrum signals appears as noisy to any unintended receiver now what is the need of spread spectrum modulation to avoid the intentional interference called as jamming in spread spectrum signals the jamming power is spread all over the spectrum as the spectrum is you know wide enough the overall effect of jamming is very much less than the background noise and on the contrary in narrow band signals as the bandwidth is less the effect of jamming power is significant so jamming severely you know degrades the quality of signal second is to reject the unintentional interference from some other user and this is possible to achieve by assigning a different code for the signals from various users and this type of communication which allows multiple users to share a common channel for a transmission of information is called as code division multiple access that is cdma in obtaining the message privacy the message privacy can be obtained by superimposing a pseudo random pattern on the transmitted signal next to avoid the self interference due to multi path propagation a signal can take multiple paths while traveling you know over a communication channel from transmitter to receiver the signal components following you know different path lengths will result in a dispersed signal at the receiver and this is known as self interference this type of interference also can be suppressed by using the spread spectrum modulation and last is in low probability of intercept signals a message can be hidden in the background noise you know by spreading its bandwidth using the code word and then transmitting the coded signal at a low power level so due to these modifications the probability that such a signal interception or detection you know it is reduced to a great extent and hence such spread and coded signal is called as what low probability of intercept signal that is lpi signal now let's see the overview of spread spectrum communication you know it is a, a means of transmission in which the data sequence occupies a bandwidth in excess of the minimum bandwidth necessary to send it it means effectively we the signal is mapped to a higher dimensional signal space signal spreading is done you know before transmission by using a spreading sequence the same sequence is used at the receiver to retrieve the signal and spread spectrum you know it is the most effective against interference whether it could be intentional or non intentional with fixed energy in spread spectrum what is going to be happen you know the input it is fed to a channel encoder very soon we are going to see the Uh, spread spectrum digital communication system model and then it produces a narrow bandwidth along signal around the central frequency and signal modulation using sequence of digits that could be spreading code or typically you know generated by a zero random uh, number generator which increases the bandwidth significantly which spreads the spectrum and then receiver uses the same sequence to demodulate the signal and then demodulated signal it is fed to the channel decoder well a system you know it is defined to be a spread spectrum system if it fulfills the following requirements what are those requirements first is the signal occupies a bandwidth 
much in excess of the minimum bandwidth necessary to send the information as i already told spreading is accomplished by means of spreading signal often called a co code signal which is independent of the data next at the receiver d spreading is accomplished by the correlation of the received spread signal with a synchronized replica of the spreading signal used to spread the information now this is the actual general model of your spread spectrum digital communication system so you can see on the screen that binary information sequence you know it is fed to this channel encoder on the transmitter side at this channel encoder encode this input sequence according to some error control coding techniques and the coded sequence then it is given to this modulator then this modulator gets you know uh, pseudo noise random uh, sequence from the pseudo random pattern generator and then this pseudo noise sequence you know it is spread the signals randomly over a wide frequency band over here the output of the modulator and the signal at the output of this modulator it is a spread spectrum modulated signal and then this signal is transmitted over some channel and at the receiver the demodulator the demodulator gets coded signal back from the spread spectrum signal and for this purpose you know the demodulator it requires the same pseudo noise generator which we use at the transmitter end hence the pseudo random pattern generator at the transmitter and the receiver side operate in synchronization with each other and then this channel decoder at the receiver then gets the binary information sequence back so as i already told the information sequence at the input is in binary message which is recovered at the output of the system as a output data digital signal as we already discussed about the function of channel encoder decoder modulator demodulator in module 1 so in addition to these basic building blocks of a digital communication system two additional blocks that are called sand a zero random pattern generator one of them it is connected on the transmitter side whereas other it is you know it is connected to the demodulator on the receiving sides both these generators are identical to each other and these generator you know it generates pn sequence that is pseudo noise binary sequence which is impressed on the transmitted signal at the modulator and then this modulated signal along with the pseudo random sequence travels over the communication channel and this sequence you know it spreads the signal randomly over a wide frequency band and thus the output of the modulated signal is spread spectrum signal now talking about the receiver the pseudo random sequence you know it is removed from the received by other pseudo random generator operating at the receiver and thus the pseudo random pattern generator it operates in synchronization with each other and you know it is synchronization it is achieved before the beginning of the signal transmission this is very important and this is done by transmitting a fixed pseudo random bit pattern which a receiver can recognize even in presence of interference and once this synchronization is established it is possible to begin the transmission so thus you know in the spread spectrum receiver the receiver can demodulate the transmitted signal if and only if a known zero noise sequence has been transmitted along with the information signal now modulation techniques used over here it is a psk that is a phase shift keying and fsk that is a frequency shift keying if psk is used then the pn sequence generator at the modulator is used along with psk modulation to shift the phase of the psk signal pseudo randomly and the resulting signal at the modulator output is called as direct sequence spread spectrum signal and if a binary or m array fsk is being used then the frequency of the fsk signal is shifted zero randomly and the resulting signal at the output of the modulator is called as what frequency hopped spread spectrum signal so hope so you understood this model 
not talking about a spreading code it is a noise like random signal that has to be generated at the transmitter and the same signal must be generated at the receiver in synchronization applications of spread spectrum it is used in military communication cdma technology and mobile communication now talking about a pseudo noise sequences well the spread spectrum approach you know called transmitter trade reference it can utilize a truly random code signal for spreading and despreading since the code signal and the data modulated code signal are simultaneously transmitted over a different regions of the spectrum and the stored reference approach you know can't use a truly random code signal since the code needs to be stored or generated at the receiver and for this system a pseudo noise or pseudo random code signal must be used this is the pseudo random sequence generator so pseudo noise sequence you know it is as i told it is a noise like high frequency signal the signal it is a binary in nature it looks like pulses and the sequence is not completely random but it is generated by a well defined a logic over here that is a parity generator this is the main actual the logic it is there the same logic is used at the transmitter and the receiver and you know since the sequence is generated by well defined logic it is rather a pseudo random hence it is called pseudo random sequence you know it can be generated by feedback shift register and the combinational logic the generalized block diagram it is shown in the figure you can see this shift register it consists of an m flip flops 0 1 and up to m flip flops are there the data of one flip flop it is given to the next flip flop whereas the clock pulse you can see it is applied the output of the flip flop are the given to this logic circuit c and depending upon the outputs of this flip flop the output of logic circuit is decided this is the output and this logic circuit output is given as an input to the first flip flop of this shift register and you know this sequence the pseudo noise sequence is generated at the output of this last flip flop in the shift register and remember at each pulse of the clock the state of the flip flop is shifted to the next flip flop and logic circuit output is shifted in the first flip flop the pseudo noise sequence you know generated at the output of flip flop it is repeated after every 2 raised to m digits because the shift register it would have 2 raised to m states and those states start repeating you know after 2 raised to m and hence the output sequence will also repeat after 2 raised to m bits and 2 raised to m is also called as the period of output sequence and mostly this logic you know it is a modular mod to adder if the shift register enters into zero state it will not come out of it and the output sequence will be of zeros only so to prevent this the zero state of the shift register is not allowed and hence the total number of states of this m state feedback register will be 2 raised to m minus 1 so we would have a period of what 2 raised to m minus 1 bits now after understanding your pseudo noise generator now we would see the properties well what are these you know randomness properties that makes a pseudo random signal appear truly random there are three basic properties that can be applied to any periodic binary sequence as a test for the appearance of randomness and the properties called a balance run correlation are described for binary signals as follows first is your balance property 
a good balance you know requires that in each period of the sequence the number of binary ones you know differs from the number of binary zeros by at most one digit if there are four zeros then there will be five ones are there so it means the number of ones is always one more than the number of zeros in each period of a maximum length sequence next it is a run property a run means you know subsequence of identical symbols or sequence of single type of binary digits the appearance of the alternate digit in a sequence starts a new run and the length of the run is the number of digits in the run so among the runs of ones and zeros in each period you know it is desirable that about one half the runs of each type are of length one that is only one zero or only one one and about talking about a one fourth are of length two, then there should be zero zero or one one. One eighth are of length three, and so on. So the length of the run is equal to the length of the subsequence. Next, it is your correlation property. If a period of the sequence, you know, it is a compared, compared term by term with any cyclic shift of itself, that is autocorrelation, it is best if the number of agreements differs from the number of disagreements by not more than one count. So students, we have studied about what is spread spectrum, what is the need of it, what are the concept of it. We have studied the model of it. Then we have say, studied the PN sequence, how we are going to generate it, what are the different properties of it. Here it is an assignment. So you need to solve this assignment and submit it to my email address. In next module, guys, we are going to study direct sequence spread spectrum. This is my email address. And thank you very much, students, for being with us.